and the surrounding counties to come to these Georgia, uh, these G schools here in Atlanta, Georgia. How hard is it to get these kids that are right in, you know, right in your backyard to come to a school like Georgia Tech or the University of Georgia, things like that? Well, look, I mean, there's a lot of really good players in in in, um, in Atlanta and the surrounding areas, and. Um, uh, but, you know, you've also got to make sure that you, you do a great job evaluating. You know, uh, one is you can't recruit just off of recruiting rankings. I think evaluations is really important. But the second part is, you know, we have a lot of good, you know, Atlanta or surrounding area players on our roster through our time when you really think about it. I mean, guys like Jordan Usher and, you know, obviously Kyle Sturdivant and Davon Smith and James Banks and, you know, I could, I could, you know, Myers Kelly, you know, I mean, we, we had a lot of, you know, a, a lot of good players that um, uh, were Josh Okogi, who starts in the, yep. you know, with right. the Phoenix Suns right now. That's so right. we have had a lot of good, Quentin Stevens, and so, uh, you know, we had a lot of Atlanta guys and surrounding area guys outside of Atlanta on our roster. It just so happens to be, there's, you know, look, there's, you can't, not everybody can go to Georgia Tech. Not everybody can go to, to Georgia. And, um, you do the best you can. Obviously, there's, there's factors involved that, you know, you gotta remember a school like Georgia Tech. You, there's a lot of things academically, uh, as well, too. And, and also, like I mentioned, these last two years, the biggest change has become the NIL. I think that's the biggest change of the landscape in college athletics is the NIL. And um, um, and that has completely shifted a lot of thinking and 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 mindset on um, you know on the uh, you know on the NIL uh, uh, on, on, on where maybe guy on, on young young student athletes where they choose to go to school and that's just the change of the dynamics of of the, co- of the sport of men's basketball for college athletics. Yeah, I, I, that, that's right. And we talk about it a lot, obviously. I mean, we're, we're covering college football, basketball, and the NIL uh, era is is a big part of the conversation, and it's certainly upon us. You have, I mean, you referenced it, the, like the rare experience of being a coach while that was changing. Like, what, what are the most tangible, obvious, noticeable changes that you saw pre-NIL, now in NIL in terms of trying to get guys I mean guys are just asking you straight up like hey what are you getting me or like what are what are the obvious changes uh, as this has happened well I would say like in our first in my my first five years at Georgia Tech I always felt you know we were on an even playing field I always felt that because you know there, you, there's there's very direct rules of what you're allowed and not allowed to do and obviously if someone was going to do something um, outside of that, that was that that was against the rules. You you were right. not allowed to do that. Um, after year five, I felt the playing field was totally different because it became not as much about certain things and about the NIL. And again, the NIL is legal, so yeah. so it's it it's. I, and I think it has evolved in almost pay for play. And and I know maybe not everyone wants to hear that, but that's kind of how it has evolved. In, for, in, in, in the sport, and the, I think the only way to maybe get it a little bit under, where, where I think there's three ways to do it to get it under, um, where it gets a little more of an even playing field, because I think you can get really left behind, and that's what happens. People get, you get, schools can get left behind um, if right away you're not ready for NIL. What I would tell you yeah. is there's three ways. One, or really four ways, either, you know, one, You've got to be all invested into the NIL. Two, there's got to be legislation from the from the government, uh, federal legislation, to say that everyone, this is how this is the rules because you can't. The whole thing with the NCAA is they don't want to get sued, and so what can hold up and not hold up in court? And only way that is federal legislation. Three is you say, okay, the ACC, we're going to play by these, by we're going to be by these rules. Um, Big Ten, we're going to be by these rules. Big East, we're going to be by these. So each conference, so everyone maybe in the conferences are playing on the same rules. But the fourth way to do it is you just say, look, we're going to have a salary cap. And everyone gets, I'm just, again, I'm making up a number, $600,000. And you pay the players and give it to who you want to give it to, recruiting, offer whatever you want. 
you're sort of a general manager and you've got to budget your your six hundred thousand dollars or maybe it's one point five million or two million, whatever the number is. Sure. Yeah. And and then and then anything over that if someone does something over that, that's that's where the rules are broken. But you know, I'm I'm giving you a a million dollar salary cap to pay your players on top of on top of the scholarship and everything else as actual income and maybe play A and B get each get two hundred thousand and then you gotta figure out for players just like the NBA does, you know, and 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 maybe that way if everyone has an equal salary cap and maybe not everyone can 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 afford that salary cap. So you would have to then decide, okay, this is the limit we can go to, but if I can't get to that point then, you know, it is what it is, but no one can go over this certain dollar amount. So I think those are the four ways you've got to look at it to have a chance to maybe go back to how it was pre-NIL. It's sort of like in my first five years, where it was an even playing field.